Some may call her the human goddess. Others may think of her as a little bit trigger happy when it comes to dealing with yokai. Kinda like another main character who should not be mentioned, for this part at least. And given her background, some may consider this lovely goddess a geek or nerd, whichever you prefer. To me, I'll call her Sane Kochia. Hello, Maja here and welcome back to another episode of Character Profile. The last episode, we covered the dual wielding gardener, whenever she does get the chance anyway, scaredy cat that is Yomu Kompaku. In this episode, we'll be looking at everything about Sane, from games, print works, fan related stuff, and anything that can be attributed to her will be discussed here. The last human from playable command, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Without further ado, let's begin the character profile, Sanae Kochia. Name and their meaning. Her full name is Sanae Kochia. Sanae can mean rice seedling or early seedling and Kochia meaning eastern wind valley. The same east in Kochia appears in Toho and the same wind from Kochia also appears in the title of Mountain of Faith. Unusual among the cast is both are real names used in modern Japan. Makes sense given that she came from the outside world to begin with. Presumably, Sanae's name is derived from the real world person Sanae Moria, the 78th head of the Moria family, which claims descent from the god Moria. Moria, the one with an E, is an archaic pronunciation of Moria, the one with the I. This family were supposed to succeed one of the priests of the Suwa Grand Shrine, Jin Jo Khan, a name that's actually used in the real world. Don't get used to that. Character Appearance In her first appearance in Mountain of Faith, she wears a blue and white outfit similar to a shrine maidens with the blue areas covered in light blue polka dots and stripes. She has long light green hair and yellow eyes. Green in UFO and Ten Desires, blue in Hiso Tensoko's portrait. She wears a snake shaped hair accessory wrapped around her hair on one side and a hair clip shaped like a frog's head, both probably meant to represent Kanako and Suiko. She carries a gohei with straight paper decoration as opposed to the typical gohei. In Ten Desires, her hair color is slightly paler and she wears a shorter skirt with maroon colored boots instead of aquamarine colored shoes. As of Legacy, the only change to Sanae is that her hair is considerably much shorter from previous games. There's one key thing to note about Sanae's design though, which I believe is the most important part. If you're a shrine maiden, then there's only one thing to say. That armpit. Appearance in games and print work. Let's talk about all her appearance in the series. Being one of the more newer humans in the series, she first showed up in Mountain of Faith as the stage 5 boss. Technically speaking, Sanae first showed up in the prologue story of the same game, but only mentioned by Reimu. Her goal at the time was trying to gather faith by replacing Reimu's shrine with the Moria one. Lesson here is that messing with Reimu is bad for your health. She appeared in Subterranean but only as the extra stage mid-boss, asking either Reimu or Marissa if they came to visit the shrine. Once more, Sanae gets her ass whooped. In UFO though, she's dealing the ass whooping instead of receiving it. In this game, she became a playable character, and this started a trend for Sanae, but that'll be explained in a different section. Her next playable appearance just so happened to be her first fighter, Hiso Tensoko. She was one of the only three characters in the game to get their own story mode, venturing Kensoku after seeing a mysterious thing, believing it to be a giant robot. See, this part is one of the reasons why she could be considered a geek slash nerd. She showed up once more in Double Spoiler as the EX boss in Scene 3, 6, and 9. Her next appearance was in Ten Desires. With the huge surge of divine spirits, Sanae goes out to investigate. To her, gathering divine spirits is the same as collecting human desires. It is equivalent to gathering faith. Her next appearance was in Hopeless, but only as a background character. Why a religion character who was excluded from a religion game is very questionable. Luckily, you'll be able to learn why later on. She showed up in another spin-off, Impossible Spellcard, as the 7th day boss. 
Her last appearance so happened to be the latest game as of this date, Legacy. She's one of the four playable characters in this game. Sanae and Raymu were investigating a metallic spider near the mountain. To Sanae's surprise, it was the Curiosity Rover. And from there on, the main game begins. Since Sanae is newer compared to the other girls, she's not going to have as much appearance in the print works. She was in Silent Center Chapter 9, but only as a cameo. She also had another cameo appearance in Strange and Bright Nature Deity Chapter 22. She appeared in the grimoire of Marissa where Marissa made a page detailing Sanae's spell cards and such. She appears in Wild and Horned Hermit as a secondary character, getting quite a bit of appearance in this one. In Symposium, she had her own article written by Q. She shows up in Forbidden Scrollery in Chapter 22. She's also appeared in the newest work, Visionary Fairies, in Chapter 2 as a cameo. As of this moment, the latest chapter for Visionary is Chapter 3, so she may have more appearances in it in the future. Personality Our other shrine meter is confident, energetic, and dutiful, sometimes too much so, and tends to get carried away easily or have trouble thinking for herself. She also appears to be something of a geek, making references to popular culture and having knowledge of advanced scientific concepts. She is from the outside world, so no surprises. As someone who grew up in the outside world, much of Gensokyo seems strange and novel to her. She finds unusual great fun in exterminating yokai and solving incidents, seeming to view herself as the hero of a fantasy novel or video game. To be fair, I can imagine a lot of people getting excited if they were put in Sanae's position. Multiple characters have noted that Sanae's dismissive attitude towards yokai and yokai powers make her too much like a yokai herself. The fact that she is adjusting to life in Gensokyo makes her an extremely rare case, considering most humans either try to get out or get eaten, so yeah, Sanae is unique alright. According to Zune, meta-wise, Sanae's personality is such that she can be easily inserted into almost any plot. Hey, more appearances I'd say. Occupation slash jobs. Sanae's occupation as a wind priestess means to be the priest to worship the god of wind. However, while causing miracles of wind and rain to come about through a secret technique with many secrets, since she herself is treated to the same level as gods and has become one who gathers faith, she's also a living god. Ain't that fancy? A human slash god. Why the bloody hell not? In Mountain of Faith, just in front of Reimu, she said about herself, I guess you could call me something like a Shrine Maiden, indicating that there's a chance that she's different from a Shrine Maiden, but in the works, she is fundamentally treated as a Shrine Maiden, the same way Reimu is. Furthermore, since Sanae is a god while at the same time being a human, even if she loses all her faith, she can continue to live as a human. Now that's really convenient. Luckily, you're in Gensokyo, so you shouldn't have to worry about losing faith. Titles Sane's got a few titles compared to the other girls, but we should no doubt mention them. She has Defied Human of the Wind, Newbie Goddess of the Mountain, Modern Living God, Superficial and Shallow Human, how bloody accurate it is, Selfish Shrine Maiden. The titles ain't holding back any punches, aren't they? Theurgist of Wind and Lake and Mountain Dwelling Living God of Miracles. Ability Slash Powers One of Sanae's main ability is causing miracles. Sanae is capable of invoking miracles through her godly heritage, and many of her spell cards are themed after miracles of various religion or odd events. It's mainly the manipulation of weather and also seems to use it in prayers for rain. The miracles that she can invoke are not related to good or bad fortune. They are merely events that have a low chance of occurring. So don't expect Sanae's power to make you win the lottery. I wish though. Before invoking a miracle, she needs time to prepare it proportionally to how unlikely the miracle is. Simple ones can be invoked with a single word, while the most complex ones can take days. Using godly powers ain't an easy thing. Though I can't comment on that since I'm not exactly a god. Another of her abilities relate to her role as a shrine maiden. Sane is a Shrine Maiden as mentioned, but of a different type to Reimu. Like Reimu, she is capable of summoning gods, granting her some of their powers. 
While she relies on this ability much more than Reimu, she is only capable of summoning her patrons, Kanako and Suiko. While you may be limited to two gods, I'd say they get the job done. Music. Now Sanae only has two tracks, both from Mountain of Faith, her stage theme and boss theme. Her stage theme is the primal scene of Japan, the girl watch. Her boss theme is Faith is for Transient People. Gameplay Being one of the newer human girls, she hasn't been in a lot of games. But it's not that bad though as the amount of time she's been in the main games is actually the same as Yomu. As Yomu was in Imperishable, Phantasmagoria, and Ten Desires, while Sane was in UFO, Ten Desires, and Legacy. There's of course the spin-offs where Yomu would indeed have more appearances, but I was only counting the main games, and the fact that she's shown up quite often in the more recent games has to say something about our second Shrine Maiden. Starting in her first playable game, UFO, Sane had two shot types. Her first shot type is One Point Focus and Homing type. Her shot is Sky Serpent. The shot homes enemies, but only if they're in a horizontal line, so a little different from the usual home you get from Reimu. It still functions pretty well. Her spell card is Snake Sign, Orochi of Ancient Times. A big snake pops in the background and enemies take damage during it. While the animation is happening, you can still shoot while you're invincible, so go wild! Her second shot type is High Power, High Spread type. Her shot type is Cobalt Spread. The unique thing about it is that it shoots out frogs in a spread form. When they connect to an enemy, they do a mini explosion. When you switch to Focus Stance though, those frogs will be fired straight ahead instead. Her spell card is Frog Sign, Willy Toad. The attack doesn't happen right away, but during its charge time, you're invincible and can still shoot. When it's fully charged though, it'll do a massive amount of damage. So that's the trade-off. Popping in 10 Desires, she only has one shot type as the game had 4 playable characters. She uses the comforting wide type. Her shot is Mighty Win. During Unfocus, she has good spread shot as her shot type implies. Her focus shot is Mighty Blast. When focused, she loses the spread and the shots are more compact. Her spell card is Grey Thaumaturgy. Yeah, hopefully I said that right. It summons a star and damages enemies. Like her previous spell cards, she's invulnerable while still being able to shoot. Her special ability in the game is that her spirit world gauge charges much faster than the other girls. In Legacy, she only has one shot type because there's four characters once more. Her wide shot is Cobalt Spread and her focus shot is Sky Serpent. Her spell card is Willy Toad. The operate as if you were playing UFO, so if you played that you should be familiar to Sanae. We're now in the fighter portion. Even though she only had one game for it, it's still important nonetheless. In Hiso Tensoko, Sanae's tools are more geared towards baiting enemies. She possesses some large melee attacks and bullets that cover a good amount of space and stay on screen for a while, making her good at forcing her opponents into disadvantageous situations. Sanae's flight will summon wind, which can be used to move extremely quickly, shorten jumps and perform other unique maneuvers. Another notable feature is Sanae's goddess summons. Her assists, especially the conical moves, are effective weapons in her neutral game, allowing her to dominate once used. However, Sanae can't rely on these assists often, as they have significant cooldown time. Sanae also suffers from having a poor pressure game and may struggle ensuring spirit damage without spell cards. Playing Sanae requires a deep understanding of her unique features, especially her wind summoning flight. Some of her pros are, has dense bullets that can cover a lot of area, possesses melee attacks that have big hitboxes, goddess summons allows her to control a lot of space, 
She has incredible movement speed, unique movement style, has many applications, and allows her to move in ways others cannot. Some of her cons, however, are very loose pressure gain, summons have fairly long cooldown periods, her counter initiative gameplay and mechanics make her very difficult to learn. Some other notable features of Sanae is Sanae's flight summons win. Sanae's flight summons win, as mentioned before. Sanae cannot change her flight angle at all. The wind's force will have an effect on Sanae after the flight ends, and she will be pushed or pulled by it slightly. Sanae's wind can also be used to redirect some of her bullets. She is able to summon her goddesses, Suiko and Kaneko, as 4C and 6C bullets, as well as her 214 and 623 skills. Once a goddess is used, there is a cooldown period before it can be used again. Skills cause a longer cooldown and differ from each other, but each can be leveled to decrease its cooldown. Cooldown only begins once the summon leaves. Relationships Now that we're in part 3, let's talk about some of Sanae's relationship. One of her major ones would be the bloody goddesses she's living with, Suiko and Kaneko. Sanae serves as a shrine maiden of Kaneko Yashika and Suiko Moria and moves with them to Gensokyo. Sanae is also Suiko's distant descendant. Yeah, you heard that right. This girl. This child looking goddess, who is barely taller than Chirino, gave birth. Let that sink in your mind for a bit. Whoever did the duty certainly had a lolly complex, or she asexually reproduced, whichever came first. During the events of Mountain of Faith, Kaneko sends Sanae out to collect Faith. Much like Yukari's use of Ran and Shen, Sanae can summon Kaneko and Subiko in her spell and skill cards in Kiso Tensoko. Another person who is of no surprise is Reimu Hakurei. Sanae appears to have a friendly relationship with Reimu as she has been visiting the Hakurei Shrine on numerous occasions both in the prologue of UFO and in Walden Horn Hermit. Sanae is even tasked with minding the shrine while Reimu is training with Kazen, and we all know how that training turned out. Marissa is another person in her circle. Sanae frequently meets Marissa on her visits to the Hakurei Shrine and they seem reasonably friendly. The last notable one would have to be Kazen. Sanae lives on the Yokai Mountain near to Kazen and are considered neighbors. They meet fairly often and are on friendly enough terms. Kazen is a bit critical of Sanae as well, a bit to a much lesser extent than Reimu. Sanae describes her as living in a large mansion, corrected by Kazen as being a training dojo. Fun slash interesting facts. We're finally into the fun facts section of Sanae, hence the name. And trust me, she's got plenty to work with. Who here is a good drinker? I don't know about myself as it's been a while since I had any, but I do know that Sane is someone who doesn't like their alcohol. It seems that she has a relatively low alcohol tolerance compared to other characters. In one of the endings of Mountain of Faith, she gets extremely nervous when informed of the constant drinking parties the Tengu will hold, with the narrator commenting that she'll just have to put up with it. And in Wild and Horned Hermit Chapter 19, she's constantly distressed about being made to drink. Looks like she won't be playing any beer pong anytime soon. Earlier, I discussed about how Sane's spell cards are themed after various religious slash odd events. Now it's a good time to showcase those spell cards. The first one is Miracle, Miracle of Frofrotsky, which is a phenomenon which unnatural things fall from the sky, like frogs. I could imagine Chirino exploding from the happiness slash excitement if it were to happen. The next one is Sea Opening, the day the sea split, which is a reference to Moses crossing of the Red Sea in order to lead the Israelites away from Egypt as described in the Exodus of the Old Testament. The last one I'll mention is Miracle, God's Win, which is based on a kamikaze that sunk the invading Mongolian fleets, same in Japan. Gotta love Mother Nature. I was also talking about Hiso Tensoko, that you could summon Suiko and Kaneko to help you. This part is where things get funny. In Sane's last stage, she fights Suiko. Even though you're fighting said goddess, she can still summon Suiko to attack herself. Like mentioned a long time ago, taking beating yourself up to a whole new dimension. So Sane pops up frequently in Wild and Horn Hermit. Chapter 6 is one instance where her geekiness shows up. Reimu and Marissa captured an electric animal and told Sane about it. She's thinking about what creature this electric animal could be. 
so she assumes an eel or catfish since they're creatures from the outside world that she knew could discharge electricity. Her next guess is good old Pikachu. The outside world knowledge coming to play there. I wonder what her Pokemon team would be like. The last but probably in my opinion the most interesting of Sane's fun fact is her absence in Hopeless. Hopeless was a religion game using Shinto, Buddhism and Taoism. You'd think a religious character like Sanae would have showed up as a playable character considering she just showed up in 10 Desires, the game before Hopeless. The fans were confused as to why this was the case. Zune said there was a reason to it and the print works were told why this was the case. In chapter 19 of Wild and Horn Hermit, Sanae complains that Kaneko or possibly them not taking action in those two incidents. The two incidents she was referring to was Hopeless and DDC, which at the time the chapter was discussing and it was the newest game. Kaneko replies kindly that she must calm down and in another scene tells her that the settlement of negotiations with the Tengu about the installation of an aerial tramway. She remarks that she or they've been always busy for completing it. Along with Sane also knowing the negotiations had been very long, it should be implied that Kaneko stopped Sane from taking actions on the incidents for some reason. For example, because Kaneko wanted to concentrate her mind on the negotiation, because Kaneko couldn't find it worth doing to take actions in the incidents or something else. To add another reason to her absence in DDC, Marissa points out to Sane in the same chapter that Sane hasn't used her tool regularly. In other words, it isn't so well used as to build its own ego and to get it in Rampage. An important mystery solved, in my opinion anyway. Fanon stuff. We're in part 4, meaning it's the fandom stuff, where all the batshit crazy stuff will happen. Let's see how Sane will fare against the fans. Since the release of UFO in Hiso Tensoko, Sane's popular image has shifted from soft spoken and demure to markedly eccentric with her knowledge of robots, anime, and enthusiasm for aliens. Mountain of Faith hinted at this eccentric streak long before UFO came out, but since this happened only in the endings, it remained relatively obscure. Sane's appearance in Subterranean was unexpected by many. Due to that, the fact that she says, You can't let yourself be held back by common sense and Gensokyo, right? And her Miracle Fruit spell card sounding cute and girly while all of her other spell cards from Mountain of Faith sounds much more stoic has earned her the nickname of Fruits based on the Sweets uh, LOL label which I'll be showcasing on the screen. It's referring to airheaded girls who follow fads without really understanding them. In other words, Sane is seen as kind of a ditz. Sane's ditziness is somewhat supported by the title she got in Wild and Horned Hermit, Superficial and Shallow Human. Like I said, the titles don't hold back any punches. Another nickname among the Japanese fans is whatever I'm posting. It says, yeah, whatever is up there. A pun of this, Zetai Yuru Sanai, uh, literally meaning absolutely unforgiving. This is due to her aggressiveness towards yokai, particularly Kogasa. The nickname is usually combined with a picture of her smug expression from UFO against a yellow and red striped background, the flag of Macedonia, which is a parody of a famous meme of Futaba channel, Meiji Rizu, a serious reply to a troll slash joke post. I wonder if this picture would suffice. Some fans have diagnosed Sanae as suffering from Chinonobu. Okay, that's a good one. Dekomori Sanae and her Molnir hammer ready to go. Since Sane is originally from the outside world, some fans draw her in a schoolgirl uniform. Makes sense. By extension, this results in Sane being shown as flirty, if not outright forward in Dojin, and is a factor behind her having a curvy figure. Modern eating compared to Gensokyo's more traditional fare, the other being her divine ancestry. The flirt master is here. Due to Sane's outfit being similar to Reimu, Fans often refer to her as Player 2 Reimu or 2P Reimu, a character who, just like in most computer games, will take over Reimu's position if Reimu as Player 1 is knocked out. It makes it more fun that there is an alternate palette of Reimu that resembles Sanae's outfit. With Reimu's red outfit and Sanae's green hair, there are even running gags equating the two shrimings with Mario and Luigi. That's something you've definitely seen alright. Have you ever heard of Sanae is a good girl? If you have, then you can thank the Dojin work 
Cold Wind But Warm Winter by Happy Flame Time. <laughs> I'm not even doing a top 5 Toho Dojin words and Happy Flame Time still shows up. Speaking of that, I should probably make a new episode in the future. Anyway, this meme, mostly from the English speaking community, came to be from page 29 of it. Here Sane is getting her head patted while being called a good girl. The meaning to this could go two ways. It could be speaking in its literal sense, or it could indicate that Sane is a naughty girl in questionable contents. Knowing the community, it's going the latter. I mean, when you got shit like this, I'd be surprised if Sanae wasn't portrayed otherwise. Some Western Toho fans have noticed that when Sanae moves horizontally in UFO, her poses resemble Superman. In fact, if you play Legacy, you'll still see that pose. Gotta read them comics, am I right? What does Sanae and Aya have in common, aside from appearing in the same game? Apparently, they're both Zune's girlfriend. It's best not to ask. Because of Sane's appearance in numerous titles, many fans in the West have drawn parallels with her to Aya and refer to her as Zune's other girlfriend. In addition, since Sane is often seen as somewhat ditzy and large-chested, as well as the fact that she is strongly associated with both the Miko and Squirrel Girl fetishes, various Japanese fans, including a number of Dojin artists, also portray her in a similarly lascivious manner. Gotta love the fans there! The backlash is very slight but longer lasting compared to with Aya, mostly from people who are annoyed at the lack of Sakya and those that are incredibly annoyed at how the Moria Shrine is gaining plot relevance, considering that their appearance practically spawned two games, I can see why. This has some people mockingly joke that Sane will become the new main character. The day that happens, Zune will give up beer, so highly unlikely. The revelation that Sanae isn't playable in Hopeless and DDC has raised a few questions from fans, particularly as fans were expecting her in the former due to its religion-based plot as mentioned earlier. UFO and Hiso Tensoko have made Sanae rather popular though the true extent is hard to tell as she's been placed below the top 10 in recent popularity contests. We'll be using the 10th, 11th, and 12th popularity contests to prove it. In the 10th, she was 11th. The 11th contest, she was 12th. In the 12th contest, she still remained in 12th. She's still high, no doubt, but just not there. Pairings. As with any fandom, you gotta have pairings, and Sane is no exception. To start off, let's bring the OG Shrine Maiden here. Reimu and Sane, or Rei Sana, could be said that it simply comes from the fact that the two are both Shrine Maidens. But the Mountain of Faith dialogues might bear some leads for it. It was the only popular pairing for Sanae before Kogusa and Sanae came about, which is another pairing you'll learn soon. The phrase Rei Sana no Michi wa Ayumu, I walk the path of Rei Sana, is commonly used to express support for Rei Sana. Armpit support for life! The next pairing is kind of a three way with her two goddesses, Suwiko and Kanako. Kanako, Suwiko, and Sanae, or Kanasana, are Suwaksana. Kanako is dominant over Suwiko, having taken control of Suwiko's shrine by force, and Sanae is often depicted as being a level headed shrine maiden who tries to keep both of her goddesses' antics under control. Featuring the only male character that isn't a cloud is Rinosuke. Rinosuke and Sanae are Sa Rin. Rinosuke is half human, half yokai, the major theme here. In Sanae's case, Rinosuke is heavily interested in items and matters of the outside world, and because Sanae is from the outside, she would be the most interested or know the most about the things he carries. Another pairing would involve Zune's other girlfriend, Aya! Aya and Sanae, or Aya Sana. The origin of Tengu is the god Sarota Hiku, and the origin of Miko is the goddess Ama no Uzumi. According to mythology, these two were a married couple. As a result of this lineage, we have this pairing between the Tengu Aya and the Miku Sanae. Both have wind-based powers and are bosses of stage 4 and 5 respectively in Mountain of Faith. This pairing was popularized by Pastel Tell. The phrase Aya Sana wa Fujin no Mata Taki, Aya Sana is the wink of a wind god, is commonly used to declare support for this pairing. Wind power for days. While talking about Tengu, let's switch it to another one. Wolf style. 
Sane and Momiji, or Sana Momi. The two never met in the game and have no direct relation, but share a common feature of being within Mountain of Faith and living in Yokai Mountain, and thus actually live quite similarly. The last pairing will be Sane and Kogusar, or Kogasana. The pairing that has become somewhat popular due to the fact that Sane said harsh things to Kogusa in the dialogue of UFO. While nowhere near as popular as Reimu and Sane, it is still extremely well known, especially thanks to the work like Hitoshi Mizuki's Hanging There Kogusa san, 106 pages in Danboro as of now. Fuck! The phrase Kogasana wa ori no ai ai gasa. Kogasana is my shared umbrella is commonly used to declare support for this pairing. I kind of feel sorry for Kogasa if she's getting abused, apparently. But yeah, that completes the character profile for Sanae Kochiya. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about our second Shrine Maiden. With Sanae completed, it means playable command is finished for me. At least the human side to it anyway. The question now is who to work on. I remember seeing Raisin and it makes sense since she's also part of playable command now after Legacy. But I'm sure there are others who might want a different character, so here's how we're going to do it. You guys post in the comments on who should get their next profile, any character you want. Based on that, I'll pick the one the majority wants. Before we end it off, what facts about Sane did you enjoy the most? Would you like Sane to cast a miracle where you could have snow during the summer? Do you think Sane would be a good Pokemon player? Or do you think Sane is a good girl? Good enough to be on a bloody boxer anyway? If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Or else Sane may come with the Hiso Tensoko and smoke my ass. And that's not a pleasant thing. 20 bucks on that. Like always, this is Magia and thanks again for watching.